I used to be a janitor for a high school. It was a job that I only had for about a year, and this was back in 2019. The job was not too bad, but I moved on to other things later. For the most part, when I worked as a janitor, I would work overnights in the high school and typically was all by myself. I would start at nine o'clock at night and get off at five o'clock in the morning. The high school was large, but not so big that I couldn't manage it. With all that time and the whole place to myself, I could clean everything that I was supposed to. A few times, due to events on the school campus, there were some people there around the time I started, but they would usually be gone within an hour or two. I would do the things that you would expect, mop floors, vacuum, sweep, and maintain the bathrooms. Not every room in the school required attention daily, so it's not like I was cleaning every single classroom every night. I would even have some downtime where I would just go on my phone or whatever. It was honestly a decent job. The only downside was that I had to be nocturnal and work overnights and sleep during the day. The other downside was that I was all by myself all night in a school, which sometimes felt sort of creepy. Most of the lights would be off, and a lot of them were motion detected lights, so they would turn on when I went near them. One night, I was working in a random hallway cleaning the floors. It was probably about midnight or 1 a.m. I remember that I thought I heard footsteps coming from not that far away. I looked over, but saw nothing. Now, the footsteps might not have been in my sight and come from around the corner. I walked over, wondering who was in here. As far as I knew, I was all by myself, like always. When I made it to the end of the hallway, I looked around, but saw nothing. I went back over to where I had been and continued work. Maybe I had just imagined it. I wasn't 100% sure because it hadn't been very loud, but probably 10 minutes later, I heard footsteps again. This time, I knew I was hearing it. I looked to the end of the hallway, and when I did, saw a man walking by. I only saw him for a couple of seconds because he walked past the hall to another. He was only visible for a short amount of time. I could tell that it was a man though, and seemingly an adult, but beyond that, I couldn't really tell any details because he was kind of far away. I started walking over and called out, asking who was there. Nobody was supposed to be in the school at this time. Nobody answered me when I called out though. When I got to the end of the hallway and looked, he was gone. There were other hallways that he could have gone down though. I walked a little ways farther looking around and asking if anybody was there, but I saw no one and didn't hear anything either. After that, I wasn't really sure what to do. I just ended up going back to work where I had been. Some time went by, and eventually, I moved into another hallway. Probably three hours or so after the last time I saw the guy, something else happened. This time, I was facing the end of the hallway, and out of nowhere, I heard this noise behind me. I couldn't really tell what it was. I turned around and looked back, and saw a basketball rolling right in my direction. It went past me and hit a locker. When I looked up to where it had been rolling from, I didn't see anybody. I suspected that whoever was in the building stood at the end of the hallway that I was in and rolled the ball towards me. Then they moved away out of my sight, but why they did it, I had no idea. I picked up the ball and walked to the end of the hallway to where it had been rolled from. I called out once more, asking if anybody was there. Still, nobody answered me. I stood there in silence, looking around for like five minutes. I didn't see or hear anything at all. Somebody was messing with me, but I didn't know why. I mean, they weren't even supposed to be here in the first place. Once more, I went back to work. From that point on, I wasn't bothered again for the rest of my shift that day. Just before I was done, I decided to walk all around the school to look for the person. I went into every wing and hallway and asked if anybody was there in each one. I even checked all of the bathrooms, but nobody ever answered me, and I didn't see anyone either. At five o'clock in the morning, I got off, and another janitor got there. I told him about what had happened, and asked him to keep an eye out for the guy. Then I left the school and drove home. During this time, I was living in a small house by myself, about 10 minutes away from the school. I got back, and my typical routine was to go to bed and get some sleep. It was strange to go to sleep at like 6am, but I got used to it. So on this day, 
It was probably five minutes after I got back home and I was in my kitchen. That's when I heard a knock on my front door. Instantly, I was confused. I walked over to the living room and looked out of the front window. Nobody was there. Just off in the distance, I saw a guy walking down the street. I saw him for just a second or two before he went out of my sight. It looked like the same guy who had been inside the school. I was so creeped out. I didn't fall asleep for hours. But luckily, the man never returned. And after that day, nothing like that happened in the school ever again either. I still wonder though, who he was and what he was doing. One time, I was working in an office building. It was a pretty standard building with several floors and cubicles and stuff. The building was empty overnight as far as I knew, but I was only supposed to be working on the first floor. I was supposed to be cleaning the office area and vacuum the large amount of carpet that they had on that level, as well as cleaning some other things. This story takes place on probably my second week working there. To that point, it had been very easy. I was all by myself each night and things were going smooth. I got my work done in plenty of time typically most nights. One random night though, it was 2 a.m. and I was changing one of the trash cans. Out of nowhere, I heard the sound of glass breaking. I had no idea what was going on for a few seconds. It was just so unexpected that my brain was trying to make sense of it. Soon though, I realized the obvious, that somebody must have broken in. That's when I realized that I might be in danger. The glass breaking sound came from a ways away. There were lots of cubicles and dividers and stuff. So whoever broke in was out of my sight. I wasn't sure what to do, so I got on the ground and crawled to a cubicle. I went inside, being as quiet as I could, and then I hid underneath a desk. What I heard then was footsteps moving a ways away, but inside. I obviously didn't know who had seemingly broken into the office building or why. The footsteps started moving closer to me. I was paranoid that they somehow knew I was in here or something. They were still a long ways away and seemed to slow down a little. It was at that moment when I finally had the thought to call the police, but it was so quiet in there other than the person walking that I was afraid to. If I so much as moved a muscle, I was scared the person would hear me. I was literally sitting there completely still and almost holding my breath. Whoever was in there seemed to stop and was still a ways away. I didn't hear much, but could tell that they were staying in the same area. This went on for about two or three minutes if I had to guess. Then they started to walk again and walk closer to me. For this time, they probably moved to within about 30 feet of me and I got very nervous. I was just thinking that they might suddenly look under the desk. They stopped though, and I couldn't tell what they were doing. At that point, I really badly wanted to call the police. I just couldn't bring myself to do it though. I was convinced that if I moved at all to get my phone, the person would hear it. I reached for my pocket, but then stopped. It seemed like I was making too much noise. Then I just froze and held my breath, trying not to make a sound at all. The person remained where they were, doing who knows what. They stayed in that area for what felt like forever. I honestly don't know exactly how long it was maybe five minutes at most, but that's a long time for the situation that I was in. Finally, I heard them walking back in the direction that they came from. I continued to not move a muscle. They went pretty far away, and then I stopped hearing them at all. I wasn't sure if they had left or what. I waited for probably five more minutes without hearing them at all. That's when I finally determined that they must have left. I finally grabbed my phone and called the police. Still, I wasn't 100% sure that they were gone, so I spoke as quietly as I could. I was told that the police were on the way, and I remained hidden underneath the desk. In the time that I was waiting, I didn't hear any more noises at all. I was able to leave the area underneath the desk, and was very sure that the person had gone. When I looked around, everything seemed to be in place. The police arrived next, and I told them what happened. One of the windows a ways away was in fact broken but I had no clue if anything was stolen or not because I didn't know everything that the office building had. Nothing that I was aware of was in any different place than before. After that, I was sent home because the police were going to stay there and do more investigating. 
I returned to work there several nights later to continue with my job. For the rest of the time that I worked there, I was nervous that something like that would happen again. But luckily, there were no more break-ins. I'm not sure who exactly broke in that one night, and I never heard that much more about it. For a while, I worked as a janitor at a university. The college was about average sized, and there were several different buildings on campus. There were a few other janitors, and we would all have certain buildings that we were assigned to clean. That would change as well, so basically I would just do as I was told. When I worked, it would mostly be the afternoon into the night. I would get off at like 10 or 11 p.m. oftentimes. One night, I was working in one of the buildings that had classrooms in it. It was at the west end of campus, sort of on the edge. I got inside the building in the evening, after all the classes for the day were completed. There were still a few students around studying and such, but not very many. As the night went on, there would be less and less. Most of the time, things were very similar from one building to the other. I started cleaning some of the classrooms, and it would take me a while. By probably 9 o'clock at night, there was nobody there at all. I had cleaned quite a bit, and I was just going to finish in the building and then be done. I had about two classrooms left. Now, the building had several different hallways, lounge areas for studying, and then offices. I was making my way down one hallway when I heard footsteps up ahead in the distance. They were going to the direction of the classrooms I was going to be cleaning, and I was walking towards them. As I did... I saw a man walk into my view from around the hallway. Then he kept going. Soon, he went out of my sight. I didn't think too much of it because he was a long ways ahead of me, and I assumed that he was just a student. It was unusual for people to be here so late, but he was probably just doing some late night studying. So I kept going to the classroom that I was going to work in, and I arrived about a minute or two later. When I opened the door and went inside, the lights were off. After turning them on, the room appeared to be completely empty. I had my cleaning cart with me with lots of supplies. I began taking some things and was going to start working. Out of nowhere, though, I heard a noise coming from my left. I looked over and saw that there was a man running towards me at full speed. It was the guy that I had seen just minutes earlier. And now he was aggressively charging me. I barely had any time to react. The only thing that I was able to do was move back and try to get to the door. As I was doing this, the man reached me. I felt him grabbing at my arm, and then he hit my back a little as I was moving away. Then, he crashed into my cleaning cart, knocking it over, and the man fell over as well. I was able to get away from him and leave the classroom, but I could see that he was getting up to chase after me. I ran down the hallway and found a door that was a bathroom. I got inside quickly and then locked it. The man got there about 10 seconds later. Looking back, I should have tried to leave the building, but I wasn't very fast and thought that the man might catch me if I left. He tried opening the locked door and then started banging on it. Luckily, I had my cell phone on me and I dialed 911. As I got on the phone with the police, the man was still ruthlessly banging on the door. I didn't know what on earth his problem was. He continued to try to get in the door and I didn't say anything at all. I was worried that the door would break, even though it was pretty strong. It seemed to be holding up pretty well though. The man did not let up and continued. The more he hit it, the more the door seemed to shake. But I soon heard the sound of other people in the building and I knew that it was the police. Before I knew it, they reached the man and stopped him from trying to get in. They left the building with him and I came out to see several police officers standing around. I found out that the guy wasn't even a student at the university. I still don't know why he tried to attack me and then chased after me. I don't know what his problem was. Clearly, he was dangerous. He must have hidden the classroom, but I don't think he knew that I would go in there. Maybe he was mad at me for entering the room. I still don't know. But after that, I never had any experiences like that. I worked at that school for about another year, then I moved on. That was the most memorable moment from my time there. The story I'm about to share with you all started when I was a freshman in high school. I had gotten to know a lot of kids 
met this one kid named TJ, who happened to be on the baseball and football team with me. Keep in mind, I had only known him for a few months. One day, sometime during the first few months of my freshman year, I decided to go to TJ's house. I went with my other friend, who I had known since I was young. We'll call him Finn. Key details to the story is I had been to TJ's house a few times before and slept over several times as well. His parents knew me and my parents knew TJ's parents. When I got to TJ's house, we waited for Finn to get dropped off. When he did, we all decided to go to a nearby school because some of TJ's friends were supposedly goofing off on the roof of the school. When TJ's friends he knew weren't there, we decided to walk to the other side of the neighborhood TJ lived in. To get to the other side of the neighborhood, we cut through a community college that was small. At this point, I did not know where we were going and asked TJ, but he didn't give me a response. My phone was about to die and I told TJ this and he said that I could charge it later. As we were halfway through the community college, we surprisingly ran into five friends of TJ's. Three of them I had briefly met once before and they were the type of people where bad follows them. The other two friends of TJ's were kids I had never seen before or met. I asked TJ where we were going and he said one of his friend's house. I got a weird feeling as my phone was dead at this point and it was dark out. I was walking when one of TJ's friends thought I was talking bad about his mom, but I hadn't said a word about his mom at all. Then TJ insisted that I did and shortly after TJ and his other friends insisted that we fought. Mind you, Finn, my good friend, did not say anything and stood there not knowing what to do. I've been in fights before and can hold my ground. One of TJ's friends at this point was circling me and got in my face and shoved me. I turned and his friend threw a punch at me and missed, and then I felt someone punch me with my back turned. I eventually tossed one of the guys to the ground and had him pinned, but the other guy then kicked at me. The guy I had pinned down was now on top of me and punched me and one of my contacts fell out and I couldn't see. I finally got up and was bleeding from the eye when TJ and two of his friends insisted we go round two and started placing bets. I finally walked away, and as I was, TJ took a photo of me, and somebody else I guess had a video of the fight. Later on, it got passed around everyone on the baseball team, and everybody was angry at TJ for not helping me. Anyways, we eventually walked back to TJ's house where Finn's mom was waiting to pick him up. The parents found out I was in a fight, but was more worried about TJ than me, and I was bleeding. My parents found out and were mad. We filed a police report on one of TJ's friends that basically assaulted me and attacked me. Days later, TJ was taken to a mental hospital because he allegedly wanted to come to school and shoot me in the back of the head in class. I took him to court for a restraining order, but the judge did not pass it and told us to make up and get over it. I realized that I was lured into the dark area of the community college to most likely get harmed. Finn did not help me and I haven't talked to him since. I've blocked TJ on everything and haven't seen him since either. I hope TJ doesn't do this to anyone else again, but it's a lesson that you might not know a friend as well as you think. When I was in high school, I used to ride the bus to and from school during my freshman and sophomore years. This happened during my sophomore year. I lived sort of at the end of a curving and quiet street. Most people who lived in my neighborhood had long driveways and large properties with lots of trees. The city that I lived in was pretty spread out and rural. The bus did not come down my street, so I had to walk down it and wait at the end. I was also the only person on my street to ride the bus. Generally, the bus would get there really early in the morning. I don't recall the exact time, but it would usually be dark out still when it picked me up. When I got dropped off after school, I would also have to walk the distance of my street. It was not so bad at all though, and the most annoying part was it was kind of unpredictable when the bus would get there in the morning. It would often be late, I remember, so I would be standing out waiting for a while sometimes. Other times, it would get there right after I got to the corner. The location that I got picked up from was a busier road that mine connected to. It was usually pretty quiet though when I got picked up. One morning, I left my house and was walking down the street to wait for the bus. When I passed by one of the curves in the road, I saw what appeared to be a man just inside one of my neighbor's yards. I knew that he didn't live there, and he was behind one of the trees, and I could barely see him. It appeared as though he was hiding, which I thought was really odd. 
I only looked at him for like a second, and then I just kept walking. I made it to the end of the street eventually, and the bus got there a very short time later. I was at school after that until I rode the bus home that afternoon. When I got dropped off at the corner, I started walking back to my house. I had forgotten all about the man that I had seen earlier, but when I was passing by almost the same area, I saw him again. It was really strange. He was hanging out in the woods just off the road. In that area, it was pretty dense and would be easy to hide in there. I wasn't sure what the guy was doing, but it looked very suspicious. I guess he could have been visiting one of the neighbors or something, but I was pretty sure that he didn't live here at all. I walked past trying to ignore him. He was somewhat visible, but also sort of blocked by tree branches. After making it past, I continued to walk and was a little more than halfway down the street to my house. I remember that when I made it farther, I looked back and noticed the man was now standing in the street. He was slowly starting to walk behind me. I hadn't known that he had even left the woods. It was really creepy to see. I was a long ways up from him though, so I wasn't too worried just yet. I kept walking, and when I made it to my driveway, looked again to see him still walking. He was about the same distance back though. The guy was just wearing jeans and a gray sweatshirt, and I never got that good of a look at his face. He appeared to have dark hair though. I quickly walked up my driveway, got out my keys, and went inside. When I was in, I felt a lot better and checked out the front window. The view of the street from there was partly obstructed by trees that we had in our yard. Still, I didn't see him at all. I was home alone for a while until my parents got home from work. During this time though, I didn't see the man at all. I ended up sort of forgetting about him as the day went on. The next morning, I left my house again to catch the bus. I walked on our street and in another woods area saw somebody walking through when I passed by. I immediately remembered the man and realized that it was him. I walked faster and passed by the area where he was. When I did, I didn't look over at all but tried to ignore him. I assumed that it would be a similar situation to the previous day. But this time, when I made it to the straight part of the road that led to my bus stop, I heard footsteps behind me. It was very quiet with it being so early, and I could hear him walking. I looked behind me and saw the guy maybe a hundred feet back. He was walking in the middle of the street now. I walked faster and soon made it to where I would wait for the bus. I looked down the street but didn't see my bus coming. I really hoped that it would arrive before the man reached me, but today it seemed to be running late. As I impatiently waited, I looked over my shoulder. The man was still walking towards me and now about 50 feet back. I couldn't wait any longer and I went to the left. I walked along the side of the busy road which had no sidewalk and really no place to walk at all. There was just a slim margin outside the road line. I walked along this road towards the other street a ways down that I knew my bus went down before my road. It was a ways away but I didn't know where else to go or what else to do. When I did this, I noticed the man start to follow me there as well. I walked faster and hoped that the guy wouldn't start running after me or something. For a couple more minutes, he seemed to maintain my speed and was like 50 feet back still. I walked along this road until I actually saw my bus up ahead. It was leaving the street that it went down before mine and then turning onto the busier road that I was walking on. It was a great sight to see. I kept walking and then stopped and started waving for the bus. The bus stopped for me and I got on. When I did, I looked to see where the man was. He was in the ditch and disappeared into the woods, which was about 30 or 40 feet off the road. My bus driver looked confused, but I told him what happened. The man was gone now, but my driver agreed to drop me off in front of my house after school instead of at the corner. So after school, I was dropped off right in front of my driveway. As we drove down my street, I didn't notice the guy any place, but he could have easily been hiding in the woods again. I was able to make it inside safely. When my parents got home, I told them about it. They called the police, and I remember that the neighborhood was searched, but unfortunately, the man was gone by that point. None of the neighbors knew who he was either. After that, my bus would pick me up in front of my driveway and drop me off in front of it as well. Luckily, I never saw the guy again after that. I'm a female, and this happened when I was in high school. 
my friends and I used to like to go to the high school football games on Friday nights. We would watch our friends play in the game, and there was a really large student section in the bleachers. It was always a good time, and then I would often hang out with my friends afterwards. One time, I went with two of my friends to a high school football home game. Where I'm from, the high school football games are always a huge deal. Just about the entire city shows up, and it's always packed. Plus, our team is usually pretty good. We got there early and went into the student section. During the game, we mostly stayed there, but a couple of times we got up and walked around. It was very crowded. After the game, we hung around for a little while, and then we were going to leave to go to one of my friend's houses. Then we were going to spend the night there. She lived about 10 minutes away from the school. I was driving, so we got into my car and then started to leave. There was a lot of traffic and a big traffic jam. It took probably 10 minutes just to get off of the main street. Once we were though, it was smooth sailing, but we noticed that there was a car driving right behind us. When we turned, the car turned after us. We automatically assumed that it was one of our friends from school being funny. None of us could tell who it was though because it was dark out. We were trying to guess, but I honestly didn't recognize the car at all. It was just a normal sedan, but kind of small and was black. It stayed behind us for a while, and then we turned, and it turned right after us. It continued to stay right on our tail until we arrived on my friend's street. I drove to her house and pulled over on the side of the road in front of it. The car pulled over behind us. I was actually really surprised that the car followed us all the way back. We were all still convinced at this point that it was a classmate though. High school kids will do some crazy things sometimes just for a laugh or whatever. So after we parked, we started to get out of the car. I remember getting out and starting to walk over to the car to see who it was. But then the driver's door opened and I saw a man start to get out. He was no high school kid. This guy was at least 30 and I had never seen him before. Suddenly I had a really bad feeling and I think the rest of my friends did too. Instead of trying to run inside or anything, all three of us got back in my car at once. The guy was still walking towards us. I locked all the doors, and the man arrived at one of the back doors and tried opening it. When he did, I slammed my foot on the gas and drove away. My friends told me that he was going back to his car and to hurry. I drove about as fast as I could on that residential road. I went around a corner, and then there was this park with a path through it. I slammed on my brakes, slowed down, and then turned onto the path. It was not a street, and cars were not supposed to go on it, but it was wide enough that one could. I don't know how I got this idea, but I just did, and I drove down the path. The park was not very big, and obviously nobody was there with it being late at night. I cut through this path to the other side, where it connected to a street in another nearby neighborhood. Then I took a left, and we could no longer see the guy. He would have no idea of where we were going at that point. I drove back to my house after that. We hung out there for a little while, until finally we went back to my friend's place. That made for the craziest high school football game experience I ever had. When I was in high school, I considered myself to be a pretty easygoing guy. I had a good friend group, which I would hang out with sometimes. But I remember that a new kid came into our school my junior year. His name was Brad, and I didn't like him at all from the start. He just seemed like an arrogant guy with a really short attention span. I also had two classes with him. I just remember always seeing him on his phone during class, and the teacher would get mad at him about it. He seemed to not care about class at all, and also skipped a lot. The few times that I was around him because of a group project that I got put in with him, he did none of the work. He was always making excuses and stuff, and one time he even said that he couldn't do any work that day because his vape broke. I thought he was joking but he actually did nothing the entire time that day. So anyways, I tried to avoid him for the most part, but he somehow became friends with some of the guys in my friend group, so I ended up hanging out with him in a group setting like twice. I didn't know he would be there, and he was being annoying the whole time like always. Literally the first time I was hanging out with my friends and he was there in the lunchroom, he made fun of my shoes. They were just average Nike athletic shoes, but a little worn. I didn't care what he thought, but it seemed like he was just trying to roast me to impress my friends or something. So clearly we didn't get along. Then we ended up actually getting into it a little bit during gym class one day. We were playing floor hockey and I was the goalie and he was on the other team. He basically picked up the goal and moved it to try to score. So then I picked up the goal and I threw it and then he started getting in my face and some other kids held him back. 
It was more about the fact that we didn't like each other than we really cared about a gym class game. But I remember not long after this incident, one of my friends told me that Brad really hated me. I already had a hunch, and I said that I didn't like him either one bit. I tried to stay away from him, but sometimes it was hard with us having classes together and mutual friends. I didn't know why any of my friends spent time with him anyways. But one night, I was at home, when one of my friends Jamie texted me saying he needed a ride. He told me that he was at the high school and told me to come to Lower Law. I didn't really want to go at first, but he told me he would buy me Taco Bell if I did. The school was a little less than 10 minutes away, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I told my parents I had to give Jamie a ride home, and then I left. I think it was about 8.30 p.m. or maybe 9 at this point. I drove to Lower Lot, which was sort of far from the school, but you didn't need a pass to park there. I pulled in and saw one other car in the parking lot. After parking in one of the spaces, I didn't see Jamie anywhere, though. I texted him, asking where he was. When I did this, I heard someone talking from my left. I looked over and saw Brad there. He was telling me to get out of my car. I was so annoyed to see him, but I wanted to know what he wanted, so I got out of my car. After I was out, his tone changed even more. He walked up really fast and got in my face. It was clear that he wanted to fight me, and he pushed me a little. I told Brad I didn't want to fight him, I was just there to pick up my friend. But after he shoved me, I pushed him back a little. Right after that though, I saw somebody else emerge from behind what I assumed was Brad's car. It was the only other car in the parking lot. I had no idea who this guy was, but I gathered that he was a friend of Brad. He didn't go to our school though. This guy started walking towards me and cursing me out. Now this wasn't fair. If Brad wanted to fight me, that's one thing. But don't bring your friend so it's two on one. I asked who this guy was, and Brad's friend then came up and shoved me. I took one swing at Brad, and then his friend went around and hit me from behind. I fell to the ground, and Brad kicked me in the leg when I was down. After that, I got up as fast as I could and started running off. They immediately started chasing after me. I was a lot faster than they were, though. I ran into a grassy area next to the high school, and then off school property into a woods. The entire time I heard them chasing after me, but I was pulling away. After running into the woods, it got very dark. I couldn't see much, but I kept going through trees and heard Brad and his friend reach the edge of the woods. The woods was getting pretty thick, and they called for me to come out, but did not seem to enter the woods themselves. I waited in there for a while and hid behind a tree. After about five minutes, I left the woods and didn't see them. I'm not sure where they went, but I went back to the parking lot and both cars were still there. I went back to mine and then I drove home. After getting back, I texted Jamie and cursed him out. He claimed that he didn't know Brad wanted to fight me and also claimed that he didn't know Brad's friend. He told me Brad told him to say what he did because Brad really wanted to talk to me and I wouldn't respond to him. It was a lie because Brad never reached out to me at all. I do believe Jamie, but it was still messed up for him to say that to me. Over the next few days, I didn't see Brad at all. He wasn't in classes, and I was happy about that. In fact, I never saw him again after that. He didn't show up to class anymore at all. I'm not sure if he just kept skipping class until he got expelled, or if he changed schools again. Either way, I'm glad I don't have to see him anymore. When I was in high school, I was really into sports. I played on the football, basketball, and baseball teams. This took place during my senior year and after a basketball game one night. I loved weightlifting and would work out in the school weight room all the time. I remember we had a basketball game at 7 that night, which ended at about 9 p.m. After the game, my coach would always stick around for a while in his office. On this night, we went back to the locker room and coach talked to us like always. I remember that we won the game and after coach was done, guys started changing and leaving. I told coach that I was going to go lift, and he said that was fine. So I left the locker room and then went over to the weight room. It was kind of on the other side of the school though, in another wing. The weight room was kind of tucked away, and you had to walk past these janitor's closets to get there. So I went inside the weight room and started lifting. It was nice because it was just me all by myself in there. I was really focused on getting in as good of shape as I could at that point because I was going to be playing football in college the next year. So I worked out in there for probably 40 minutes or so. Then I was going to go back to the locker room, shower, and drive home. 
By now, everybody in the school was gone, except for my coach and the night janitors. I believe there was two overnight janitors, and I knew who both of them were because of my many late nights at the school. After exiting the weight room, I passed by one of the janitor's closets. I'm not sure why, but I looked in. I saw what appeared to be a man hiding inside, sort of behind some stuff. After passing it, I stopped where I was and was thinking, did I really just see that? I almost went back to look, but realized whoever this guy was would know that I saw him then, so I decided to just keep walking instead. I was going to find one of the night janitors and let them know that I saw a guy hiding in one of their closets. The locker room was still a ways away, which was also where the coach's office was. But before I was even out of the first hallway, I heard footsteps behind me. I knew it was the guy who I had seen, but I had no clue as to who he was. The school was completely silent by this time, so I easily heard the guy walking behind me. I reached the end of that hallway and then took a right. Then when I was going down that hallway, I continued to hear the guy behind me. I couldn't seem to find any of the janitors, and whoever was following me was starting to get closer. At that point, I decided to just leave. I walked down another hallway to the closest exit. When I got there, I left the school. After making it outside, the man behind me did not follow. I had to walk all the way around the school to the side door, but that was also locked. Luckily, I had my phone, and I called my coach and told him what happened. He came to the side doors and let me in. Then I was able to get back to the locker room and change and get my stuff. My coach told me he would go to see who the guy was in the school and that I should just go home. So I left. After that though, I never heard what ended up happening. Maybe the guy left the school as well. I'm not sure what he was doing in there. I'm not sure what he was doing in there or why he was following me. In my mid-twenties, I had a very odd period of my life where I didn't have anywhere to stay and wasn't making enough money to live somewhere on my own. I was fresh out of college and was running out of time to move out of the dorms. All of my friends from school were just moving back in with their parents or leaving town, so it left me in a bad spot. I needed to find a cheap place and a roommate to split the bills with. As time was getting scarily close to me needing to move, an ad popped up on a renting website. It was posted by a man named Xander, listing the ad as a search for a roommate to move into the house he was renting. I checked the rest of the post, seeing it was a relatively small house, which likely meant it would be cheap too. I replied to the ad, and later that day Xander called me. We set up a tour and agreed on a price, and I ended up moving in. Though basically having to move, I still didn't think it was a bad place. Xander and I got along well. He had also just graduated, so we were both on the same page, and it was actually kind of refreshing to have a friend in a similar position. The house itself though wasn't the best. It only had a single bedroom, so my room was the living room. It was better than nothing though, and I was out working most of the time anyway. After a week or so of living there, having just fully settled in, it was the middle of the night and I was sleeping in my living room when I heard the front door open. I looked up and saw Xander walking in. He looked over at me, but I don't think he noticed I was awake because he walked right past and down the hall to his room. I heard him move something around, but then he came back out. He walked down to the front door again, this time stopping and turning to face me. Xander stood there and looked at me for a good 5 to 10 seconds before going back outside. Something about the way he was acting made me really uncomfortable. A few minutes went by before I heard some movement outside the front door. When it opened, I closed my eyes so that he wouldn't notice I was awake. He came in and shut the door, then walked slowly down the hallway, breathing heavily. As he got to the end, I opened my eyes slightly catching a glimpse of Xander holding what looked like a body in his arms. He moved into his room quickly and shut the door. I was almost so in shock that I wondered if what I saw was even real. I came up with every possibility, like maybe he was out partying and the body was just some passed out drunk person needing a place to sleep. I sat up and quietly walked closer to his room to try and hear what he was doing. As I listened to him continually moving around, the worry about what he was up to started to overcome me. After thinking about it, I knocked on his door. 
all the movement stopped instantly and was followed by multiple seconds of silence before he walked over. I heard the lock click and then he cracked the door open, only enough for me to see a sliver of his face. He started apologizing for waking me and said he was just rearranging some things. After hearing him lie, I figured I'd just straight up ask. What were you holding when you just came in? Was that person okay? His face straightened and he had a look in his eyes I'd never seen before. He didn't answer. We held eye contact as things got increasingly more intense. Then I quickly slammed my body into the door, knocking Xander back and revealing a lifeless body slouched up in the corner of his room. He shoved me out and locked the door behind me, but I'd already seen enough. I ran back and got my phone, then left the house and called the police. Xander made no attempts to run or hide, but unfortunately, it was too late. The body was completely lifeless and had been so for multiple hours. The details of everything else were withheld, but I know he lied about his age, being almost 30 years old, and I also know he remains in prison to this day. He still has kept to himself about why he did it and what he was doing with the body. I consider myself lucky though to have gotten out of that situation quickly, because if I hadn't, who knows where I'd be. This summer in late June, I moved from my apartment into a quaint little home on the outskirts of my city. I was familiar with the area and had been eyeing the house market for a while, hoping to finally leave my apartment and purchase a home. This one was older and needed some work, but the price and location were great. It was a mile down, just off the highway, mostly with trees and grass around, but there were a few neighbors within sight as well. The day I moved in, I drove the U-Haul down to the house, and while I was unloading, I noticed someone watching me. They were standing really far off toward the tree line, but were facing me and just watching as I moved in. Being so far away though, I didn't see much harm in it, I just found it to be kind of creepy. I forgot about them for a while, focusing on getting everything inside the house before dark. I finished around 6, just as the sun was starting to set. With time to spare, I went back outside and locked up the back of the U-Haul, then got in to drive it back and drop it off. When I turned the truck on and started driving though, I noticed that person again, now closer to the road but still near the trees. When I passed them, I watched as their head turned, following the truck with their gaze as I drove away. During my drive to the U-Haul shop, I got a strange feeling in my gut, just that something was really off about that guy and maybe he wasn't so innocent. I turned in the truck and ordered an Uber back, keeping my eye out as we drove down the driveway, and although it was probably too dark by now, I'll still note that I didn't see him anywhere. I got out and went inside, turning on the lights and feeling overwhelmed by the amount of boxes and furniture stacked all throughout the house. It was just past 6.30, so I took a dinner break then got to unpacking. I spent the whole night organizing what needed to go in storage and what needed to be unpacked. Once I had the pile of boxes for storage, I started taking them up to the attic. I pulled the ladder down and carefully climbed up with one hand as I hauled the box up. When I got up there, it was pitch black, but I could barely see the light bulb reflecting a bit of light from downstairs. I walked over and pulled the string to turn it on, but it was really dim and didn't light up more than a couple feet around. I set the box down and pushed it up against the wall, then went back down the ladder and into the kitchen where I'd piled up my other storage boxes. I picked up another, and as I walked over to the stairs, I heard the sound of metal shaking from the upstairs hallway. It was the clear sound of someone climbing down the ladder. I looked up the staircase, and just a moment later, a man appeared at the top, looking down at me. He started running down the stairs at full speed, and I turned to get out through the front door. 
I could hear his footsteps coming up behind me as I ran over to my car, getting in and locking the doors as he slammed up against it and tried to open it. After a few failed attempts, he tried to punch the window a couple times, then took off running toward the tree line. I was absolutely terrified, but managed to call the cops. Of course, they didn't find too much, but guessed he might have been staying in the attic for a few days, based on a few blankets that were up there. I don't know the truth, and likely never will, but just thinking about how I was up in the attic as he was hiding somewhere in the dark just a few feet from me is terrifying. And he did chase me afterward, so I'm pretty sure he wasn't a harmless person hiding out. But what he would have done to me had he caught me is a question that I don't want answered. I lived in the same house for my entire life, all the way from childhood through high school and even most of college. So when I moved out during my last year of school, it was really weird to be in a different place. I'd rented out an extremely small single bedroom house on the other side of town, and even though the change of environment was different for me, I still really liked it. On day one, I got a van and moved all my stuff into the new place. I didn't unpack really at all, I just set all the boxes down in the main room and chilled for the rest of the night. The whole process of finding a place, contacting the owners, signing papers, all of it just had me exhausted and it felt good to be done with all the hard parts of it. I hooked up the TV and stood it up on a few sturdy boxes, then turned on a show to watch. It was probably about 7 o'clock, so it was too early for bed, but as I sat there and watched with half-open eyes, at some point, I began hearing two people talking outside. I lowered the volume on the TV and listened, hearing it sound like they were right outside my house, but they were talking quietly and whatever they were saying was too hard to make out. I got up and walked over to one of the windows, pulling the curtain back a little, but as soon as I did, a figure quickly moved past it from outside. I jumped back a bit, getting startled by them being so close so suddenly. The voices had stopped speaking by now, but I could hear a set of footsteps quickly going around the house, and then that suddenly stopped too. Just like that, it was completely quiet again. I checked a few more windows before getting back to the couch and continuing with my show. I was sure I was just being paranoid about living alone for the first time in a new environment and I knew the neighbors' houses were really close, so I assumed it was just them walking around. I sat there for a while and eventually laid down as I started getting sleepy, dozing off around 10. When I woke up, the house was completely dark with the only light coming from the TV screen. I looked at my phone and saw it was 2 a.m., so I shut off the TV and laid back down. But just as I was about to close my eyes, a soft creak echoed through the floorboards from across the room. I immediately shifted my eyes toward the sound. Standing in the doorway across the hall, a figure was staring at me. His eyes were wide open, peering at me with half of his body hiding behind the door frame. My eyes were locked on them for the longest few seconds of my life before they sprinted out of the doorway and down the unlit hallway. Immediately after, another set of footsteps on the other side of the house ran in the same direction. There were a few soft thuds, then silence. The house was still fully dark, making the entire thing even more terrifying. My heart was beating out of my chest, and I was in the odd state of panic while also being frozen in place. When I collected myself, I dialed 911, telling them what happened in between my shaky breaths. While still on the line with the officer, I got up and turned on the light. Through the hallway were scuffed shoe prints going up and down multiple times. Then I turned around and looked back at the living room where I was sleeping, and all over the carpet were more dirty shoe prints some even getting within just a few feet of where I was sleeping. When cops showed up, they searched around and took a few samples, but they didn't get any hard evidence. Even more unnerving though, 
they still aren't sure how the intruders got inside or outside the house. I told them about the thuds I heard from the back of the house as they left, but the windows in that area of the house were still locked. I don't know if they had some way of unlocking and locking them from outside, but that had to be it. While the amount of shoe prints showed they likely had been inside for a long time, going through each room multiple times over, nothing ever showed up missing. They never showed any signs of wanting to harm me either, but it all just horrifies me to think about why they broke in. Maybe they were looking for someone else. Whatever the case was, it's been over two years now, and they have never come back. I had a really weird experience when I used to work at a dollar store. The store was called Family Dollar, and I lived only a few blocks away in an apartment. I had a few co-workers at the Family Dollar, but this story revolves around one in particular. It was a guy named Chris. He was a big guy and around my age. Sometimes we would work at the same time, and usually only two or three of us would be working at once. However, Chris didn't really seem to be much of a talker, Neither was I for that matter, but I actually talked with him a couple of times, and he just gave really short responses. We worked together for probably two months or so on and off. One night, I was working with somebody else, and Chris was not there. It was a fairly quiet night on the job, and everything went by normal. After I got off of work, I went back home to my apartment. My apartment was pretty close, like I said, and I lived alone in my place on the second floor of the building. By the time I got back, it was maybe 9.30 or so. I did not have to be up early the next day, and I ended up staying up sort of late. So, at about midnight, I was still awake and in my living room. There was a sudden knock on the front door. It was a loud and firm knock, and it startled me. I sat up, and suddenly my heart was racing. Why would somebody knock on my door at midnight? I really wasn't expecting it. I got up and walked over, and in the process, heard another knock. When I arrived at my door, I looked through my peephole to the other side before answering. My coworker Chris was standing there. It was very strange to see him, because I knew that he didn't live in this building. I also had never told him where I lived before. He was just standing there, facing my door and looking at it. I chose not to answer. It was just too weird. I kept watching, though and he stood there for maybe five minutes at least. Then, finally, he left and walked away, disappearing down the hallway. I was left wondering why on earth he had been there in the first place. I knew that I had never invited him over, or even told him my address. Well, the next day, I worked, and I just happened to work with Chris. Not too long into the shift, when things were sort of quiet, I asked him why he went to my apartment the previous night. Chris completely denied it. I said I literally saw him standing right outside of my door the previous night, but he said he wasn't there and had stayed home. He even went so far as to claim that either someone who looked like him was there or that I dreamed the whole thing. I knew that was a lie. I just kind of said whatever and then moved on with work. The rest of the shift went by as normal and I didn't talk to him at all. After that, I never saw Chris at work again. I found out that he quit, but I didn't get a reason why. I found the timing of it very suspicious. I haven't seen him since then, and I still wonder what he was doing that night. A few years back, I worked at a dollar store in my city. It was like five minutes away from my apartment, and I worked as a cashier. After having the job for several months, I was working one night like any other. Usually, we had one or two employees working at once because the store was small. I was by myself on this night, and it was maybe 4 or 5 p.m. There were about two or three customers in the store at once on average. I remember that a man walked in as I stood behind the counter of one of the two check lanes that we had. After he walked inside, he went down one of the first aisles and disappeared. Another customer came and checked out about a minute later. Probably 20 minutes or so later, the man checked out. He came up to me and set down just one drink. I don't remember exactly what it was. The man had long hair and was wearing sunglasses, I remember. After he paid, he left the store. 
The interaction was really nothing out of the ordinary. He didn't say much at all, if anything, to me. But I remember that after he left the store, he was hanging around by the front for a while. I could see out of the front window to the sidewalk out front and a bit of the parking lot. We were also connected to some other businesses as part of a strip mall. None of the businesses ever seemed to be all that busy though. So I kept working and every now and then would see the guy. He was just kind of hanging out on the sidewalk out front. I didn't really think too much of it though. I checked out some more customers and people would come and go from the store, but the man remained out front. Eventually, hours went by. Soon it was nighttime and the store got even quieter. I noticed that the guy was still standing out front. What was he doing here for so long? I really didn't know, but I also didn't really care that much. Sometimes he would look over in the window and I thought he might come back in the store, but he didn't. Only one or two more customers came in for the rest of the time that we were open. Then it was time for me to close up and leave. I had been working by myself that day because business was slow. When it was 9 o'clock, I locked the doors and saw the guy look over when I did. Then I clocked out, did a few last minute things, and left the store by probably 9.15. After walking out, the guy was still standing there, about 15 feet to my right. I went to my car in the parking lot and got inside. Then I started driving back home. I needed to get gas though and I stopped about halfway back. I went to a smaller neighborhood gas station on a corner. When I got there, I got out of my car and started filling it with gas. About a minute into doing that and I saw this older beat up looking car enter the gas station. The car was blue and also pretty small. It did not drive to a gas pump but instead parked in one of the few spaces that was on the side. I happened to notice the driver and realized that it was the same guy from the dollar store, the man with long hair and sunglasses. Now, at first, I thought this was just a coincidence, because the gas station wasn't that far away from the dollar store, but still, it was kind of weird. I mean, this guy was standing around outside for hours, and then when I left, he leaves. When my gas tank was full, I decided to go inside of the gas station. I was just going to get something to eat to have when I got home. The man was still inside of his car at this point and just sitting there. I left my car and walked inside the store. I was browsing around looking for something and noticed the same man walking in. Now I was worried. It seemed a little too strange for this guy to suddenly come inside the store now that I did. I left right there, not even bothering to buy anything. When I did, I saw the guy start to walk out after me. I quickly hurried to my car, started the engine, and drove away. As I was getting out of the parking lot, I saw the guy getting inside of his car. I quickly turned down one of the residential streets and turned my headlights off. It was hard to see, but I went down that street and then took a left. The guy would have no way of knowing where I went. He didn't follow me, probably because he couldn't see me. So after that, I was able to drive home, and I made it back okay. After that night, I didn't see the guy for the rest of the time that I worked at the dollar store. I'm not sure why he did what he did that night but it was very strange. For a little bit of background, I will mention that I'm a female and this took place last year. I was shopping at a dollar store called Dollar Tree. I don't go to Dollar Trees very often, but on this night I did. It was probably around 7.30 p.m. or so. And when I got inside, the store was very quiet. I only saw a couple of other shoppers and maybe one employee around the store. I shopped around and got a few things, and then went to the front to check out. Working at the check lane was a man that had dark hair that was somewhat short. The man was also kind of short, and when he scanned my items, he was making comments on all of them. He was saying stuff like, what's this for? Overall, it was slightly annoying, but not a huge deal. After checking out, I remember that the guy said, well, now I'm off, and he turned off the light to his check lane. I was just like, Oh, that's cool, and I started to leave. But the guy kept walking with me as I was leaving. He asked me where I was going after this, and I just said home. Then he started talking to me and walking with me as we left the store. It was really weird and something that I was not expecting at all. As we were walking through the parking lot, the man asked me to go with him. I asked him what he meant, and he was like, What did I just say? Do you want to go with me? My car's right there. I said no thanks, 
but he continued to walk with me. When I got to my car, he was still there, and I said that I better be going. Then I unlocked my car door and started to open it. The very instant that I did though, the man grabbed the door, forcing it open some more. Then he appeared to try to force his way inside. I knew that there was no chance I would be able to get in and drive away from him or anything. So I just turned and ran away from there. I still had the keys in my hand, luckily, so he wouldn't be able to steal my car or anything. The man started chasing after me, but I had a good 10 foot head start on him at least. The dollar store was part of a larger strip mall, which had at least five other stores in it. I sprinted up towards one of the other ones. When I was about halfway there, I could tell that the man was running behind me, but I didn't look. I made it to a Target department store, which was on the end of the strip mall. When I made it there, the man was no longer following me. I went inside of the store and called the police when I was safely inside. Then I waited for them to get there. It took about five minutes. When the police were there, I went back out to my car with them, but the man was gone. He had left and I told the police the whole story. Fortunately, they went inside the dollar store and spoke with the other employee who was still working there. They knew who the man was and the police were able to locate him pretty soon after. I was really glad that they found him. That man was such a creep and I feel very lucky to have gotten away from him. This occurred several months ago when I was shopping at a dollar store. I had gone to the local dollar store by my house just to get a few items. It's always a quick and easy in and out there because the store is usually not that busy. On this night in particular, there were a few more people than usual, but still far less than the nearest grocery store. I walked in and grabbed a basket and started going down the aisles. I was in probably the second one when I noticed this one man walking past me. The reason I took notice was because he was walking really fast. He too was holding a shopping basket and it had several items in it. The man looked sort of dirty. He had a very short haircut, but was wearing old baggy jeans and a t-shirt that was ripped. He was also wearing socks with flip-flops. He whizzed past me and then I heard him go into the next aisle. I looked to my left and soon saw him zoom past and go into another aisle. It seemed like the guy was trying to speed run a shopping trip through the entire store. I just went back to my shopping and didn't notice him for several minutes. I think that I was in the next aisle when I heard the man approaching again. I knew it was him because I heard him flip-flopping really fast around the corner. He came into my aisle and walked right up to me, then stopped. When he did, he asked me if I could pay for his basket. I looked down and saw it now overflowing with a bunch of random items. Sorry, but no, I said to him. Then he turned and zoomed off, going away from me. I heard him go into the next aisle over and ask the same question to somebody else. They also declined, and then he walked away from them. I wondered why the guy was doing that, but I returned to my shopping. But maybe five minutes after that, I was still shopping, and the guy approached me again. This time, I was in a more open area between a few aisles. He asked me once more to pay for his basket. This time, he seemed almost angry, and the way he said it was almost in a threatening way. I said no again. The man then dumped his entire basket onto the ground. All of the items scattered, and then he said loudly, What's your problem, man? I was thinking that the guy must be on some kind of drugs or something. He then started repeating himself, asking what my problem was. But each time that he did, he got louder and louder. Soon, he was yelling. Some people inside started to take notice. I didn't really say anything and just tried to walk away. He followed me as I did, though. I asked him to leave me alone, which only caused him to ask me what my problem was again. He just kept saying, What's your problem, man? This went on for more than a minute. Soon, an employee approached us and asked the man to quiet down. He refused, saying that he would not, and the employee told him that he had to leave. At first, the man said no, but then he changed his mind. He said fine and then started walking away. I think that everybody in the vicinity did a sigh of relief when they heard that. But before leaving, the man stopped and then took off his flip-flops and socks. He then threw them in my direction, thankfully missing me. Then he turned and left the store. After he was gone, somebody said to call the police. The guy was gone now though, so I don't think anybody did. 
I finished my shopping, checked out, and left. Luckily, I didn't see the guy again after that. It made for my craziest trip to the dollar store by far. This one incident still haunts me to this day. I'm a 22-year-old female, but this happened when I was 18. I still haven't moved out and I was living with my family. It was my sister Judy's 16th birthday. Judy wanted to stay at a hotel and celebrate with her friends. My parents didn't want her to go alone, so we all planned for a staycation in a countryside hotel. My dad was taking care of the entire accommodation of seven to eight people so we could afford a three-star hotel. The decor and the condition were quite good and the staff was also helpful. When we checked in, we got into the rooms on the third floor. We ate later that day and Judy went for a walk at the riverbed nearby with her friends. I wanted to have some time for myself, so I decided to stay back. I was reading in my room when my mom called me and asked if I can go to the front desk to get some more pillows for my sister's friends. As much as I hated these unwanted chores, I didn't refuse my mom. I grabbed my room key and started walking all the way out to the elevator. The corridor was empty and dimly lit. Maybe that's why I didn't notice the man until he moved into the corner. Yes, a man was sitting on the floor, mumbling some gibberish. He had a small dump of pebbles in front of him that he was counting in a very creepy way. His hair was all shaggy, and the coat he wore had a very strong smell, somewhat like a goat. As I silently walked past him, he lifted his head and smiled at me, flashing his bloodshot eyes. It took me only a second to figure out that this dude was Milky Way high. I ignored him and got into the elevator. He watched me without even blinking as the elevator door closed. I grabbed the pillow from the dash and went back to the elevator. On the way up, my heart was beating fast. I expected the man to be gone, but as soon as the elevator door opened, I found him in the same spot. He was sitting there, humming creepily while rocking his body back and forth. I started walking down the hallway when I had a gut feeling to turn around. As I did, I saw that the man had started to follow me. I panicked and started to walk faster down the hall. He was chuckling weirdly while looking straight into my soul. His senseless rant was scaring the crap out of me. I felt like he was chanting some spells or something. My survival instincts kicked in and instead of stopping in front of Judy's room, I rushed straight to my parents. I expected the door to be open, but I twist the doorknob and realized my parents were enjoying their alone time. But the man did not stop following me yet, so I started panicking and kicking the door. It was embarrassing to ruin my parents' privacy, but what choice did I have? The man kept walking towards me, stretching his arms out like he was dying to touch me. His long, sharp fingernails were filled with dirt. Seeing my parents were taking their time open the door, I could not stay put. I started screaming. Dad, open the door. Dad, please just open the door. The moment I called out to my dad, the creepy behavior changed. He looked away from me, then slowly tilted his head to the right. His left eye twitched, and then he said out loud, Oh, Dad. There was disbelief in his voice, as if he expected me to be alone in this hotel. What he did after will be forever imprinted on my memory. He started backing away, but not in the usual way. He didn't turn around. He didn't run. He just slowly started backing away while watching me the entire time. Finally, my dad opened the door and I started crying. I was too old to cry like that, but my dad understood something very serious was happening. He took me in and my mom gave me water to calm me down. Once I contained myself and told my parents everything, my dad went to go look for him, but after searching the entire floor, they didn't find him. I couldn't sleep the rest of the night, but whenever I closed my eyes, I swear I could see the man crouch down in the corner of my room, chuckling at me. The next morning when I woke up, I went down for breakfast. 
and I saw two cop cars parked outside the hotel entrance. My dad was talking to a tall, handsome officer. When he saw me, he called out to me. My dad asked me to tell the officers about the man from last night. So far, we believe that the man was probably some homeless addict and needed to sneak inside a hotel by what the cops told me. But what the cops told me afterwards sent shivers down my spine. A family staying on the ground floor has filed for a missing person report this morning. Their seven-year-old daughter left their room to get some M&Ms from a vending machine last night, but never returned. The couple must have thought that the daughter had wandered off and got lost, so they contacted the front desk and asked them to check the footage of the front gate security camera. In a footage of 4 a.m., the same man from last night could be seen carrying the little girl on his shoulder and walking past the gate. The girl seemed like she was sleeping, but the police suspect that she was knocked out unconscious. I gave the cops all the information I could about the man, but sadly, they never found him or the girl ever again. Just be careful where you meet a stranger. I'm a student from Iloilo, a city in the Philippines. Iloilo is a clean, wonderful city where hardly any crime takes place. We live in the suburbs as my dad and my uncle run a farm together. It was Sunday afternoon. I was watching over my niece and nephew at my uncle's house. Our family went to this farmer fair happening in the city to sell our dairy products and other harvests. My niece and nephew were about six and eight years old, and I had a lot of fun being around them. We were watching TV in the living room when I got a call from my dad. He said that he had a flat tire on their way home and would be stuck on the highway until any help arrived. I assured him that I'd make dinner for the kids and myself so that he had nothing to worry about. Around 5.30 when the sunlight was almost gone, I went to the kitchen to prepare some rice and chicken. My uncle had this big chicken coop in the backyard, so eggs and chicken were the two most common ingredients in every meal. I drained the rice and insert the chicken legs to boil in a broth when I noticed the bush outside the kitchen window was moving. At first, I thought it was the wind, but the second time it moved, I felt weird. Bushes only move like this when a rabbit or a raccoon was hiding in it. I ignored thinking about it and went back to my meal prep. Once I was done cooking, my nephew asked me for some scrambled eggs. I checked the fridge and realized that all the eggs were taken to the fair for sale. I love my niece and nephew a lot, so I didn't want to say no to their face. I told them to stay inside and play video games till I went to the chicken coop and came back with some fresh eggs. Being the sweet little munchkins they were, they nodded their tiny heads and waited for me. There was still some light outside, so I didn't need to take a flashlight with me. I stepped into the backyard from the back kitchen door, and as I stepped out of the kitchen coop, a rush of cold sweat dripped down my spine. I don't know why I felt like this, but something inside the coop just didn't feel welcoming to me. The coop was in darkness, and I regretted not bringing a flashlight with me, but I only needed like three or four eggs, so I decided to be quick and get it done with. I had to close the door behind me so the chickens didn't escape, but once I did that, I found myself standing in the stuffy room, highly scented with the smell of chicken poop and rotten hay, with a single ray of dying sunlight coming from the ventilator at the top. If you haven't been around chickens, then you probably don't know this. Even though they're pretty noisy birds, once the sun sets, they all fall into this uncomfortable slumber and doze like some old grannies. So along the smell and darkness, the chicken's eerie silence made my overthinking mind run wild. All the horror movies I watched so far kept flashing into my eyes. Just stop overthinking it and be a man. I kept saying this to myself. I slowly started to check the chickens' nests one by one. For five minutes, I found nothing. I just kept grabbing all over the place. But then in the corner, with the help of dying sunlight, I spotted three eggs resting in an empty chicken nest. Thinking the chicken living there must have just gone on to another nest somewhere in the coop, 
I victoriously walked towards it to collect the eggs. But as I reached the dark corner, I heard the sound of heavy breathing. I stared into the pitch black darkness, holding the three eggs in my hand. One second gone by, two seconds gone by, and then I saw two wide eyes open in the dark. Just a pair of two big eyes with red veins bursting from them. The sound of breathing got heavier as their eyes noticed me. I could feel my legs frozen to the ground, and no matter how much I wanted to run, I couldn't. I tried to scream for my niece and nephew, but nothing but a soft groan came out of my throat, and then I heard the sound of chewing. The eyes were still fixed on me, but I could tell the owner of the eyes was chewing on something. The crisp and crackle echoed into the dead, silent coop. I don't remember how long I was standing like that, staring into those vicious pair of eyes and hearing the crackling chomp echo. But suddenly, I heard my nephew's voice calling out to me. I can't let those kids be near whatever is hiding in the dark. I grasped the eggs so hard to my chest that they smashed and broke with pressure. When I ran and came out of the coop, my niece pointed at my t-shirt and started laughing. I realized that I was drenched in egg yolk. I went inside the house and locked every single door and window. I didn't tell my niece and nephews about it, as for them not to panic, because I would do anything to protect them. I told them to shush for a while as I turned off the television to see if I could hear any footsteps or rustling sounds, but I didn't. An hour later, our parents came back and I told my dad and uncle everything. They immediately went to the coop with flashlights and found a dead chicken laying in that corner. Its head was gone. Whatever was watching me in that coop chewed off its head and left the lifeless body of the poor bird. It's been three months since the incident. My uncle and dad have heightened the security around the farm so that no trespassers can enter without getting caught. Whatever was in that dark chicken coop, I pray that we never find out. I'm a 17-year-old male, and this happened last summer when I got into my senior year. My friend and I were working at a theater over the summer break as tech assistants. We were appointed to arrange the lighting for a show there. The show was a few days away, and we were in rehearsals. After hours of tiresome work, we got hungry and decided to order a pizza. We called our local pizza place asking for a large cheese pizza but whoever answered the call sounded like an AI or some freakish robot that had just learned to talk. We honestly thought it was just a new feature introduced by this pizza place in taking orders. We continued ordering with the robot. It was kind of weird, but it was asking normal questions like the delivery address and things like that. Halfway through the call, I began hearing a silent noise of typing in the background. Someone was listening to my responses and typing them up. I didn't think much of it though, but looking back, I feel I should have. The robot told us the pizza would be delivered in approximately 17 minutes, which was very specific. Half an hour went by and the pizza didn't reach our location. I dialed up the pizza place once again. I tried to call back the number, but somehow the call didn't go through even after three and four tries. It was strange because I took it from their website. This is when things started to get very fishy. I called and called and nobody answered. I then called to a different number that appeared from a Google search, and this time a human voice spoke. I asked about the details of my order. Surprisingly, they said that they hadn't gotten a call within the last 45 minutes. My friend and I stared at each other, feeling confused, but then I thanked the guy on the other end of the phone and hung up. At this point, my friend was still going on about ordering a pizza when a number I hadn't seen before called me. I picked it up and a suspicious sounding man with a weird accent spoke to me. Did you make an order for a large cheese pizza around 30 minutes ago? I answered yes. 
The strange man asked me for the delivery address again. I hesitated for a second, but then gave him our location. I should never have done that. The man proceeded to tell me that the pizza would be delivered in 15 minutes. My friend and I weren't even sure if the pizza was going to come at that point. Also, I didn't even want it anymore. Two hours later, the rehearsals were over, and the pizza still hadn't arrived. I blocked the number and decided to never pick up unknown calls again. After saying bye to my friend, I got in my car and headed home. My house was 20 minutes distance from the theater, so I was relieved that it wouldn't take long to get home. Around five minutes into my drive, I started noticing a car following me. It was a dark red car, on the smaller side, with a sign that had the name of a pizza place on the top bonnet. I thought that maybe the car was just driving back to the pizza place after a delivery or something, as the restaurant was in the same direction I was headed to. But once I passed the turn to get past the pizza place, the red car passed it too. It just continued to follow me. I made a specific turn to get to my street, and the car made the same turn right after me. I was a little freaked out, but also annoyed. I stupidly pulled over to see if the car would do the same, and of course, it did. Clenching my car keys in my hand, I got out of my car. My heart was racing in a panic, but I wanted to find out what this dude's problem was. There was a creepy looking man in the driver's seat of the red car. I walked over to his window and he rolled it down to talk to me. I asked him why he was following me and what did he want. He looked ragged and pretty effed up from his attire. The cheap scent of booze was all over him and half his teeth were rotten. He looked blankly at me for a few moments, then leaned onto his back seat to grab something. I couldn't make out what it was, so I started to step back. I'd suspected it'd be a weapon, but instead, he brought out a pizza box. He showed me the box and asked, Did you order this large cheese pizza? I have it right here for you. He kept staring at me up and down. This man sounded exactly like the suspicious call from earlier. I nodded my head saying no. He again asked, Are you sure you didn't order this large cheese pizza? His creepy emphasis on the term large and peculiar made me terrified. I said no, and suddenly he screamed. Are you sure? It's very large, you know. You might like it. He reached out to give me the pizza, but his other hand was out. It looked like he was ready to grab me or do something horrible to me. I sprinted back to my car and locked the doors instantly. I looked through the side view mirrors, and he was still staring at me. I drove away immediately to my friend's house and stayed the night at his place. We kept looking at the driveway the entire night to see if any red car was patrolling the area, but hopefully we didn't. To this day, I wonder what would have happened if I reached out to grab the pizza.